Okay, so um, we're going to start with exercise 202 today. Um, in this class, unlike the 135 class, it's, it's less likely that I'm going to sit and do an, a formal lecture before we start. A lot of what we're going to do is me demonstrating how to do certain things in Rhino. Um, so there will be a few points in the semester where I'll show slides, and you know, like when we get into rendering and stuff, to help supplement what I'm talking about. Um, but for the most part, we're going to spend a lot of time in Rhino or in V-Ray actually learning the intricacies uh, of the program. Um, we, we did kind of a, a fun little shape last class, but I think it warrants stepping back and, and really starting to understand how this works. Those of you that have worked in AutoCAD before already have a pretty good understanding of how a drafting program works. Um, but I have to go through it so that you really understand how Rhino is made up and, and what's going on uh, in it and how do we interact with it. Um, I will make one caveat in that if you want instruction on how to back up your flash drive or those kinds of things, um, my lecture from this morning or any previous 102 lecture will walk through how do you install Dropbox uh, on your flash drive to back up your files or whatever. So you're welcome to watch that. Um, I used to do that lecture in this class, but I've discovered that I need all the time I can get to get everything that uh, that we need in the class, so I'm not going to waste my time. We're going right into Rhino, okay? So uh, today we're going to actually do 2D drawing in Rhino. We don't get to do anything fun in 3D. We'll do 3D uh, starting next Monday, but we really, we really need to have a better understanding for uh, how Rhino works in 2D and what the coordinate system means and how do we interact with that coordinate system. Um, I went ahead and I clicked by habit already through, but when you first open Rhino, um, you're presented with a little splash screen here. If you click on New, you're always going to want to use the Large Object Inches um, preset. And this Large Object Inches will set your units to be in inches, um, and it will assume that you're going to draw a larger object. Um, we could pick feet, but then every time you specified inches, you would have to type the quotation mark to get inches. In this instance, everything by default is in inches, and if we need feet, we can type the apostrophe to get feet. Um, so uh, that's a little bit of, of how it works. So previously in the last class, we talked about the various uh, views that we can look at, top, front, right, and obviously perspective. Perspective tends to be the one that we do the most modeling in. However, there are times where we want to be able to draw flat um, in one plane or another, in which case one of these other views is, is useful. So today we're going to work just in the top view. So I'm going to go ahead and double click on where it says top to make that large. Right? And then we're going to look at this, this uh, view a little bit more carefully. And so as I look at this, you see that there's a point where I have a green line that runs vertical and a red line that runs horizontal. Okay? Do you guys remember way back in like the days of algebra? Uh, maybe it's not way back in the days of algebra. Maybe you're taking algebra right now. Um, but for me, it's a long ways. <laughs> it's been a while, right? But do, there, was, there, was, there were functions that you used to plot on a graph, and there was a coordinate system with an x and a y, and you used to have to count over a certain number of x and up a certain number of y. Did you guys kind of vaguely remember that a little bit? Well, drafting programs like Rhino, like AutoCAD, work on the same system. They have a 3D world, and it's established with three numbers. Right? Any point can be defined by those three numbers, the x, the y, and the z. And so what we're looking at right now is an x and a y. We're ignoring the z, which is the third dimension for right now, because we're in the top view and we're looking straight down. Uh, the x-axis is anything going horizontal across. The positive x goes from this point where the green and the red meet. Positive goes to the right. The negative goes to the left. Okay? Similarly, the y-axis is right, this green line going vertical. Anything in the positive y is going up, and anything in the negative y is going down. Okay, does that kind of make sense from the old world coordinate system of the graph? Right? So we're going to use that to our advantage as we start to draw. Okay? And so I'm going to start with what's called the polyline tool, which we used a little bit last class. It's the second tool down uh, from the arrow. So it's this line. It's, it's kind of two lines connected by three dots. Okay? And we see in my command line that it says start a polyline. And so I have the freedom and the flexibility to start a polyline anywhere that I want. Okay? But I want to be very specific about where I start it. And so I'm going to specify an x and a y coordinate for where it's going to start. So this line I want to start at 0, 0, which is exactly that point. 
So if, for example, I just moved my mouse over and I tried to get on that x, y, and I clicked, right? it looks, looks reasonably close. right? But as I zoom in, we see that it's not that close. Okay? And if I were to, at this zoom level, do a polyline and try to get really close to it, right? and then zoom in, we'd see that it's still not very close. Okay? If instead, right, I type, and again, this is in the command line, 0, 0, and I hit Enter, it's going to be, no matter how much I zoom in, it's always going to be right on that point of 0, 0. Right? So it's a very accurate way of specifying a starting point. It doesn't have to be at point 0, 0. That just happens to be where I'm choosing to start it. Okay? So then I'm going to type, I want a line that's 24 feet long in the y direction. So I'm going to type a coordinate for the next point, which would be 0, because I'm not going anywhere on the x direction. So it would be 0, comma, 24, right? But I'm, I want it to be feet, so I'm going to use the apostrophe. So it would be 0, comma, 24 feet, and I'll hit Enter. And when I do that, if I zoom out, I scrolled out a little bit, you see that I now have a line that starts at 0, 0 and goes all the way up to uh, 0, comma, 24 feet. So it's 24 feet up in the y direction. Now if I were to go over to the right, let's say I wanted to go over 12 feet, right? I would then type 12 feet, comma, 24 feet. Because this point over here would be 12 feet, 24 feet. Right? These coordinates that I'm typing in right now are absolute coordinates. So they're relative to point zero, zero. Does that make sense so far? Okay. Are, are you that likely to use these? No, not yet. But I'm going to show you some more techniques. So we've done the uh, absolute coordinates. And what we're going to do now is we're going to switch from absolute, meaning relative to 0, 0, to what's called relative coordinates. And relative coordinates are relative to the last point that you are working from. So now I'm at this point, which is at 12 feet, um, comma 24 feet. I want to reference that point and type in a new value. Okay? So I'm going to use the at sign. So like in the email when you say, you know, gadams at dvc.edu, you're going to use that at sign. So I'll start with the at sign. And then I'll specify as if the last point that I clicked was point zero, 0. So if I want to go down 12 feet, I would say 0, comma 12 feet. Oops, sorry. I wanted to go down. I would say 0, comma negative 12 feet. And I'll hit Enter. And it would be really helpful if I did it correctly. Hold on a second. All right. So at 0, comma, <coughs> negative 12 feet. And there it is. Turns out I should have read my own thing. It was 6 feet. So <laughs> at 0, comma, negative 6 feet. Sorry. There it is. Okay. So again, I can continue on with relative coordinates. If I want to go over 12 feet, I can say at right, 12 feet, comma, 0. Enter. Right? And then I could go down again at 0, comma, negative 12 feet. And you see how I'm continuing around my shape. Right? So it takes a little bit of getting used to when you, when you do these absolute and relative coordinates. Now there is, of course, another way of drawing lines. And that is to give a direction and a distance. And this is probably the fastest way of drawing in Rhino. The problem with this is that if you have a line that's on an angle or with a particular slope, it can be a little bit more difficult um, to set it up. So it works great for straight lines. Okay? And it's the most common thing that you're going to do. Okay, So that is when I go ahead and type in a value. So this is a length. So I'll type in 12 feet. Notice there's no at, there's no comma, right? And then I specify which direction it's going. So right now I'm going in this direction. Right now I want to go down by 6 feet, so I'll type 6 feet. Now I'm going down by 6 feet, and then I'm going over right, by 12 feet. So I'll type 12 feet that way. Oops. Twelve feet. There we go. And I'm going to go ahead and click there. And now I have my shape drawn. Okay? So if I were drawing it, 
right? I would probably start wherever I wanted to start, and I'd say 24 feet in that direction, 12 feet in this direction, 6 feet in this direction, 12 feet in this direction, 12 feet in this direction, 12 feet in that direction, 6 feet in that direction, and then I'll type C to close the shape. Right, so in reality, that's probably how I would draw it, which I know is much faster. But I want you to at least understand what these coordinate systems are. So if at some point down the road I reference a point, you'll understand what I mean. Okay? Same thing holds true in AutoCAD, um, though they've been hiding it more and more from you. By default, relative coordinates are on rather than absolute. You don't have to type the at sign when you're in AutoCAD. Uh, the other thing that I should point out is on these handouts that I give you, when you're reading through and you see the font change to be like a typewriter, right? that means it's something that I'm typing in to the command line. Does that make sense? Right? So you see on these numbers when I say 0, 24 feet, the font's different. Right? I try very hard to highlight that this is a typed command. Okay? OK. So now I have this shape. And I'm going to want to um, create a second line. Ultimately, the direction we're going is on the back of this page. If you flip it over, you see a very simple floor plan. Right? That's the direction we're going. That's what we're ultimately drawing. So I want to show you the techniques to get there. So I've already drawn this particular shape. Now, I could use the polyline and come inside and draw another shape on the inside to represent the inside of the wall. That, however, would be a lot of work. So instead, I'm going to use a command called offset. Uh, and offset is available. Um, I so rarely pick it. Should be available under transform, I think. Hmm, I don't know. Uh, it's under curve, offset curve. I know that offset, offset curve. Uh, but I don't. I apologize. I don't exactly know where the uh, the button is for it. Or you can just type offset, which is what I tend to do. So when I do that, I'm going to look at my command line here, and it's going to say select curve to offset. Okay, So it's asking me, what do I want to offset? But it also gives me a bunch of options that are available uh, as well. So the first thing I want to look at is distance, so D. And if we look carefully at distance, you see how there's a capital D, and then there's a little underline underneath it? Okay? That D is then the shortcut if I wanted to type distance. Okay? But these are also links, so I can click on distance. So it just depends. When, you're, when you get really proficient in AutoCAD, uh, excuse me, in uh, Rhino, you end up using all key commands instead of trying to click, because the clicking takes more time. So if I were doing this, I would, it would be offset, and then enter, and then D, and then enter, and I type the value, and then enter, and then I go back to whatever it is on the screen with the mouse. So I would never move the mouse up here. But for you guys, initially, sometimes it's easier to just click on distance. And now I can specify my distance. So it's at 12 inches right now. I want it to be 6 inches. Okay, So you see the distance changed to be 6. right? Now I have a couple other options. I can change how the corner comes together. Sharp is fine by default. Uh, through point uh, is, is another option if you want to snap to a particular point. Um, the only one that really matters is what's called both sides. So if I were trying to offset something to both sides, Instead of just one side, I can specify both sides and do it all at once. And I'll show you that in a little bit. For right now, I'm going to leave it uh, not on both sides. And what I'm going to do is go ahead and select the curve. So the curve is this shape. Okay? And you see what, when I do that, it gives me right, kind of a little tiny, let's zoom in here, gives me a little black line that follows along. And I can choose whether it's on the inside or the outside of my shape. Okay, I want it to be on the inside. And when I click, it will then create an exact copy of the shape that I have, six inches to the inside of the existing shape. Okay? So it's a pretty quick way. It's rather than going in here and actually drawing it and measuring it, it's much faster to just do an offset. Okay? So now I have that. The next thing that I want to do is add, let's say, a door at this end. Okay? So I'm going to go back to my polyline tool, and I want to draw a door at the center of this shape. Okay? And I know that the door is going to be 3 feet, but I know I want it centered. So what's the easiest way to do? The first thing that I want to make sure is that my persistent object snap 
tools are available down here at the bottom. And I know it's always hard because my head's in the way, right? It says end, near, point, mid, cent, etc. Okay, if that's not available, and I do specify on the sheet how to get there, um, you go up to tools, object snaps, and check, sorry, check the box for persistent OSNAP dialog. All right, that should be checked. Okay. And assuming that's done, I'm going to check the box for end, but I'm also going to check the box for mid. And mid means it's going to snap to the middle of a particular line, which is exactly what I need for right here. So I want it to snap to the middle. I'm going to turn off center here for a second. I want it to snap to the middle of that line. So there it is at mid. And you see when I mouse over that point, I get a little white box and it says mid in it. That means I'm snapping to that midpoint. Okay. Sometimes you'll get it and it'll say mid and comma end or whatever. That means it's snapping to both the mid and the end point of a different line. Okay. So for right now, we're going to leave it snapping at the mid. And then we're going to come down here and it's going to snap. Okay. So now this time, I have that white box and it says perp comma mid. So it's not only at the midpoint, but it's also perpendicular to the line. Right. So it's telling me that it's both. And so I'll go ahead and click there. And when I'm done, I'll hit Enter on the keyboard. So now I have a line that's exactly in the center. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to create a doorway that's three feet wide, but all I have is a line that's here. So I can use the offset command again. So I can type offset, or I could go up to curve, offset, offset curve, either way. Okay. And when I do that, I'm going to specify my distance. And my distance is going to be half of three feet, or 18 inches. So there's my distance. Now, I can do it one at a time, and I'll do that first, where I select the curve and I go to this side, right? repeat the command, select the curve, and go to that side. Or, to save myself a little bit of headache, right? I can be an offset again, and I can select both sides, which means it's going to offset from this point both directions at once. So there it is. So it saved me three or four clicks. Right? Not the end of the world when you're doing something small, but if you're doing a giant project, three or four clicks can, can matter you know, if those add up over time. Right? So you get used to those kinds of things. I'm just showing you the different, the different ways of doing it. Okay? So now that I have those two in place there, I need to get rid of the stuff that's in the middle. Right? I don't want these lines anymore. And right now those lines are continuous. They go through my two lines. So I'm going to use what's called trim to get rid of um, some of these lines. And so the trim command is right here, right in your toolbar. So if I click on trim, right, I can also type trim. That would be fine. Or I think it's under edit and then trim. Okay, so again, three different ways of accessing the command. It's going to say, first, select the cutting objects. So these are the things that are going to do the cutting. Okay? So I want this and this to do the cutting. Okay? And so I'll press Enter when I'm done. Select object to trim. Okay, this is what I want to get rid of. So I'm going to select this and this. And so now those two pieces go away. When I'm done, I'll go ahead and hit Enter. And I've now finished it. This piece here wouldn't trim because it's not going across the lines that I specified. So instead, I'll have to select it and then press the delete key. Okay? Or I could type delete. Either way. So now I have a nice hole in my wall, right? But they're all separate, right? They're separate objects. So I can select them, and this makes a good point here. When you select, this is identical in AutoCAD. If you select from the left to the right, everything contained within your rectangle will be selected. Right, but nothing that isn't fully contained. If you select from the right to the left, everything that the rectangle touches will be selected. So you can see there's the difference. Right? Just those two lines are selected, or everything in it touches is selected. Okay? So I'm going to select everything, and then I'm going to type join, or go up to edit, and then join. And that's then going to make this one continuous object, now that I've cut through it. I had another door that I was going to add down here. And I want to be able to cut through it again. 
I can again use my midpoint right there to right there. And then I can off, oops, sorry about that. And then I can do the offset again. So curve, offset, offset curve, both sides. And there it is. And I can trim through it. Okay. The other thing that happens, though, sometimes is you might not want it in the center. You might want it a certain distance from a point. Right? So let's say I wanted it six inches from this point here before I started my door. Rhino has something that's called smart tracking. It's on by default. It's bolded down here at the bottom. And what smart tracking does is it lets me specify a distance from a particular point. So I'm going to go ahead and pick polyline again. And this part takes a little bit of practice. And you may need me to come around and sit with you and show you this individually. But it's really important to get used to how it works. Okay? So when I, when I have my polyline selected, I'm going to move to that point. And you see how when I move over that point, it drops a little white star over the point? Okay? If after I have that little white star, I drag down, you see how I suddenly get a white line with a blue star? See how that changed? Okay? Now I can specify a distance from that point. So I could say 6 inches, and I'm starting my line at that point. Okay, So I'll go ahead and do that again. So this time I want it to be, let me get away here, I want the door to be 3 feet from that point. I want to be 3 feet from, from this point right here. So I'll go back to my polyline, I'll set that white point there. Then I'll drag down, get the white line, and I'll specify three feet. And so I was able to create those two lines at a specific distance from another point. Okay? It's, really, it's a really useful thing to, to get used to, but it takes a little bit of patience at first to understand how the little white dot shows up and how to get it to work. Um, so I'm happy to sit with you and make sure we get it uh, today so that you understand. So I'm going to repeat the trim that I did before. So I'll pick Trim, select Cutting Objects. I'm going to select this and this, and I'll press Enter. And now I want to delete this and this. I can drag a line through them to delete them both at the same time. And there they are. So I'll go ahead and hit Enter. And then we'll join these together. Like that. Oops. Join. And now those are put together as well. So I was able to cut through those two places. Now let's say I wanted to add a window that was over here. And I know I'm moving probably faster than you are right now. That's OK. Um, you know, we'll, we'll sit and get through it. You guys have two hours to do this, um, so there's plenty of time. Okay. So if I were going to draw a window, right? I could have it centered on the interior here. Um, and you see how I was able to drop some points there. Let's try it one more time. I'm going to go to the middle, and I see mid. I'll click, and I'll go to the outside. And I'll hit Enter to finish. Then I'm going to offset this. And I forget how wide the window is. Two feet. So let me go ahead and select this. We'll do offset. My distance is going to be one foot. And we'll do both sides. And there it is. Okay. Now since this is a window, I'll delete the center. But I'm not going to delete a hole in the wall, right? because the wall exists below the window. But I will draw. Right, a line that goes across the center of the window to designate that it's a window. Okay. I could be a little fancier. I could draw both the inner and outer panes of glass. I could draw a little bit of trim around the window. I mean, we could keep adding detail. But for right now, this will cover. Okay. I would, however, like this window to exist on this side, but also on this side. So I'll go ahead and I'll select the window. Remember, if I select from left to right, I get just what's contained. Right. If I did from right to left, I'd get everything. So I want just what's contained within the box. There it is. And I want to push this over to there. And so I could do a copy. I could go type copy, right? And I could copy from here over to there. It's one method of doing it, right? So for, for example, I could go from the midpoint there to the midpoint there, and I'd have my second copy. The other option that I have, right, would be to mirror this across a center line. So if I select this, and I type mirror, or I pick the mirror button, and I go to the midpoint down here, I draw a line that represents my mirror plane, and I get the second piece. Now, 
that seems relatively self-explanatory. But at some point, right, I can really use this to start to um, save myself some time. So let's say I have it here. Let's do mirror again. And I'll mirror across so that it's at the bottom. Right? And now if I wanted it on this wall, right, I could mirror instead of across a straight line, I could mirror across a 45 and get it across the corner. Right? So I'm showing you how fast it can be once you, once you really master these commands. Right? I know, just done. Okay? So the other option, of course, it would be to draw it again. Right? So I could come up here. I could go six inches. I could go across. And then I could go up by two feet. And I can draw across. And then I could snap to the middle. There. Right? So there's lots of different ways of doing it. I'm just trying to show you a bunch of different ways. Okay? All right. So we got that. Question. Yeah. What is the um, delete. Is it delete? It's the, you can either press the delete key on the keyboard or you type delete or D-E-L. And then cross or window it or cross it. Right. Yeah. Select it by windowing it. Yeah, exactly. So uh, AutoCAD, it's the, it, delete in Rhino is it equivalent to erase in AutoCAD. I actually get the two mixed up frequently when I go back and forth between the program. Mm -hmm. OK, if you go to Tools, go to Object Snap, it's the first one down. And then at the bottom of that, there's something called Persistent OSNAP Dialog. You want to make sure that's checked. All right, so we've covered mirror, we've covered rotate. A um, few other options. I don't know how relevant they're going to be, but I'll show them to you. Uh, you don't have to use them. Uh, the other thing is you don't have to exactly copy what I draw. right? You can feel free to modify it or do whatever you want. I'm just giving you some basic guide for what we're trying to shoot for today. Um, so the, there are a few other commands that can be useful. Uh, the first one that I'll talk about is called chamfer. Uh, chamfer takes two lines. All right, let's say I have two lines like this. And if they were at one point like this, it will then chop off a corner so that you end up with that. Right? Fillet is essentially the same thing, where we have this. Come on. And what fillet will do is instead of chopping the corner off, it will arc the corner like that. So if, for example, I wanted to have this corner of the building be clipped, right? I could use chamfer, or I can also get it up, uh, get it under curve, chamfer curves, right? And it's going to say first curve and second curve, and it's also going to ask me distances. So right now it's at one inch and one inch. Uh, let's say we need to change that to maybe 18 and 18. And so if I do that, right, and I and I and I elect to chamfer. I'll pick the first curve, which is here, and the second curve, which is there. And you see that it now clipped that corner. Right? And I could repeat it here and there, and I'd get the, the clip corner again. Okay, it's a little fat. I need to adjust the math. But you get the idea. If I wanted to make it an arc instead, it would be a fillet, right? in which case I can specify a radius. Maybe it's a foot. And I can say I want to fill it this to this. And it arced it there. Let me um, let me back up a couple so that we get a strong corner here. Um, say there to there. Oh come on. Fill it radius. Let's do 18. From there to there. And from there. Come on. There. You get the idea. So you can get the arcs. Okay. Um, in reality, I would do the arc first on the outside and then offset the curve um, so that you get it consistent distance. Um, the other thing that can be very useful is sometimes, and this is a total trick, works in AutoCAD too, 
you might have two lines that are somewhere, and you need them to come together in a point. Right? You can use either one of these commands. Right? I tend to use fillet with a radius of 0, which is basically a right angle or a sharp point. And I can connect this point and this point in a, in a, a corner. So it can be a really fast way of connecting lines together. So I just throw that out there as, as a, a random tidbit of extra knowledge. Right? OK, so we've covered that. Uh, yeah, I think we're pretty good. The one other thing that I, um, I'll show you is rotate. So let me go ahead and draw one of the doors here. So I'm going to draw an outswing door right here. I picked a rectangle this time, and I'm going to use my coordinates. Right? We're mixing things back and forth. So I'll use at, and I know I want to go over three feet, and I want to go down by an inch and a half, um, or maybe three quarters. So I did at three feet, comma, oh, negative 1.75 inches, enter, and I get that little door rectangle. Right, so again, I'm using the absolute coordinates to make that a little bit easier. Uh, I could instead draw it with a polyline where I went over three inches, down an inch and three quarters, back over three inches, and back up. Just depends on how you want to do it. Okay. I'm going to draw an arc to represent the swing of the door. Um, there's a variety of arc tools available. Um, if you click and hold, you can see that there's different arc tools. I find this one to be the easiest. Um, which is the, the start and the end and the direction. So I'll click that. It's going to ask me for the start of the arc, which would be here, the end of the arc, which would be here, and then the direction, in which case I can do a nice swing. Okay. So let's take this object then that I just created, and I'm going to copy it. So I'll type copy. It's also under transform copy. And I'm going to copy. It's going to ask me to point to copy from. We'll pick this point right here. Point to copy two, we'll put it at this point right here. Now, unfortunately, this door is not in the correct rotation, so I want to use rotate to fix it. So I'm going to go up to transform, rotate. We'll get to what rotate 3D is, but for right now, we're just going to pick rotate. And I'll select the arc and the door. And I'll go ahead and hit enter. It's going to say center of rotation, which basically means the point around which I want to rotate. So that would be right here. And then it's going to say angle or first reference point. I like to do references because I can go, OK, this line along here, I want to go straight down like that. And then it will have rotated my object. So I copy it and then rotate it. Okay? So I'm going to leave the rest up to you. Feel free to embellish or change or put windows in different places or whatever. Okay? Make sure when you're done that you save this as a 3DM file to your flash drive. You should all have flash drives today. Uh, so you're going to go ahead and go to File, Save, find your flash drive. And I need a couple folders here. We'll call this 136. And We'll call this exercise 202. And I'll go ahead and click Save. Okay, This file, this 3DM file, you're going to need next class. So make sure you don't lose it. You want to make sure you have it for next class, because we're going to build it in 3D next class. Okay, So make sure it's saved. Now, when it comes time to post your work for today, when you're done working on it, uh, you have two options. You can go to File and then Print. And you want to change your printer to be an image file. So there, here's all the default, the normal printers that are available here. Um, you want to change it to where it says image file, which will let you save an actual image file. As we come down here, you want to make sure your width and height are 8.5 by 11, so normal page. Okay. Um, it will ask you, do you want to print the particular viewport? That's fine. It's not going to look very attractive. right? Uh, we have a few other options. We can change the default line width. I uh, have it at 0.25, which seems reasonable. If it's set at hairline, you're barely going to see it when you print it. Um, 
And then when it's done, I'll go ahead and click print, and it's going to ask me to save the JPEG. So I can save it. This would be exercise 202. And I'll go ahead and click save. OK, so now I have a JPEG of this. The other option would be to go to this little triangle next to where it says top, capture to file. We'll put it on my flash drive as well. And I'll show you the difference between these two in a second. So we've saved them both. If I go to start computer and look at my flash drive, I had two versions saved. The first one, when I open it, will look like just the floor plan on a white background, black lines on a white background. If I open the second one, I'll get what my current view looked like. Right? Either one of these is acceptable for what you're turning in. Right? It's not designed to be high quality. We're learning skills right now. Right? You're learning how to draw. I don't care which one. But you will need to log into the website and actually post it. And I'm going to walk through that part again for those of you that have never posted on the website. There are also a number of you who have been in my other class. So if you're having trouble, lean to the person next to you. And chances are they know how to do it. Um, so let me go to Digital Tools and let me log in. You do not need to comment yet. I'll tell you when you do. All right, so I've logged in. I'm going to go to this new button at the black bar at the top and click Post. All right, and this is going to be exercise 202. Grant Adams. And I'm going to scroll all the way to the very bottom on the right side, click on Set Featured Image, and this is where I'm going to upload the image. So I'll click on Upload Files, Select Files, and I'm going to go to my flash drive. And there it is. And I'll go ahead and set as my featured image. There it is. I want to make sure that I categorize it correctly. So over here under my categories, I'm going to make sure this is 136 and that it is exercise 202. Okay, And then I'll go ahead and publish, and I'm done. Okay, So um, I encourage you to play around with things. If you have specific questions about how do I do something, by all means ask. Recognize, of course, this is the first day of class uh, that we're actually learning how to draw in Rhino. It's going to take a while for you to get and feel very comfortable in it. right? The more AutoCAD that you've done, the easier this will be. Right? If you're very fluent in AutoCAD, um, it shouldn't be a problem. Right? You should pick this up very quickly, in which case you'll be done a little bit early. Okay? Are there any questions? Not yet? OK. Yeah. You have to save the image first. OK, I'll come and we'll, we'll talk through it. I don't, I don't quite understand. Are there any other questions? No? OK.